Hi, my name is Roner, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. I've been getting a lot of requests to do another critique video and so on my Patreon page I asked a bunch of you to send in submissions and I've got a couple of those over here on my iPad. Also a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, but more about them later. So I'm going to start off with something deep in my comfort zone and that's going to be an eye drawing from Rob Harris. So this is a really beautiful drawing. I love that it's not just a representation of an eye. He's added something extra into that. And that's these elephants moving across the iris. What I would like to see here is less harsh lines. You can see this harsh line moving across the bottom over here. And I think that that kind of takes you out a little bit. In reality, that line would probably have a little bit of highlights. So the light's coming from here. Let's add one or two highlights over here. And this kind of just breaks up that harsh line because eyes are wet and they are gonna reflect some light here. Um, and I'm just gonna soften this line all the way across. So this is just something that happens or you kind of learn this with, with a bit of practice. Also, I'd really have liked to see you keep your highlights a little bit cleaner. More contrast just looks a little bit better. So, and let's take some of that away. There should be a lightness over here because the light is coming from the side. And then it should be a bit darker on this side as well. Uh, just to really enhance that um, the the effect that the eye is round, light is coming from the one side. Often also what happens is the light will come through the it'll come through the iris, through the lens, and actually light up the side of the white of the eye, um, which is a small detail that you you sometimes see that can be quite cool. And then I also think you, you could have worked with your highlights on your eyelid a little bit more. You know, these little like shapes that kind of run along the eye. And this just, this just kind of like adds the illusion that, that there's something reflective happening here. Just adds a little bit there, you can see. The way that you've done it at the top here is really nice and I would have liked to have seen that detail mimicked down here. So that's really great work. And I think uh, it, it's nice if you could have brought that down here. Um, I can see that you went over your whole paper and then came back in and removed some of your highlights. So maybe try using an electric eraser or a Tombow Mono Zero eraser and be wary of the way that you're applying your graphite. So if you're using pencil to apply your graphite and you know you're gonna to wanna to pull your highlights out, just be very careful. Make sure you press very softly or maybe use something like um, makeup sponges to get that really soft application of graphite and you can lift that out really easily and get your highlights. Compositionally, I think it's really cool. I think you maybe could have left a little bit more space. Um, it's funny that I'm saying that because I'm busy doing a drawing right now where it's also really cropped in. I've chosen to crop the eyelashes off like this, but I think you might have cropped it in a little bit too much and I'm not sure if you were restricted by your reference there or not. My last little tip would just be to soften this line a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, this is a great drawing. I'm really glad to see you doing something more creative, um, not just reproducing what you see in the reference image, but adding something to it. Cool, next drawing. Let's look at Jose's work. This is sick. Well done, dude. This looks so good. I, I love the trompe l'oeil effect. For those who don't know, that's like the trick of the eye and you, you draw like paper being torn or something that looks like it's uh, casting a shadow on the canvas and it can really bring a drawing to life. You must make sure with trompe l'oeil that you don't get lazy with that. So if you'd look down here, maybe hiding your pencil marks slightly more, um, especially if you, if you really are trying to trick the eye. And look, this is, your, your work is incredible. This is super, this is hyper-realism. And I can definitely see that your skill level is, you know, it's, it's very, ooh, look at that, just ruined it. Your skill level is very high, so there's no reason why you shouldn't be achieving some really nice um, crisp lines over here or getting that effect to, to really work with you here. With trompe l'oeil, something that's really useful is to be able to work from your background and bring out crisper whites than what your background has. So that's why it's effective to see that paper crease over there. And that's why I said you're kind of losing it a little bit here. I think you, you do understand this because of you know, there is a border here. I can see there is some tone, but your whites aren't crisp enough to quite get that effect. So I've just darkened it a little bit. 
And then if we use the eraser tool to just pick up these highlights again, you don't need to have these lines here to, to mark the, the shadow change. It does take away from the illusion. I think what's more effective is to just have the, the paper appear to be changing tone your eye will automatically be tricked into thinking that it's bending and catching the light. So the light's coming from, from the side here and the shadow is on this side and that's something to just kind of complete the illusion a bit. So we can just toggle that. And it's subtle, but it does make it stand out. And I think keeping that in mind when you're doing any kind of trompe work is, is important. It's very useful to almost treat the paper first or treat the paper at the end with a soft tone of graphite the way you can do this is with like a, a very softly applied cotton wool or sponge or with a brush or something like that it might be worth your while to do it in the beginning so that you don't um, ruin any of your your fine detailed work so it's very difficult to to critique works like this because these are already just so good um, i enjoy the creativity and um, yeah really really well done i love how you've done the hair that's excellent man I mean, at the skill level, you, you can be doing a little bit more to, to really make it punch home. And it's just at this, at this stage, attention to detail. It's about your own, I suppose, whether it's worth it for you or not to, to try and just push into that next level. Um, but yeah, this work is incredible. You've done so, so well. I really like your mark making. You can still see it's done by hand. So yeah, great work. Okay, next we have Matteo. This is really beautifully done. The composition is really cool. I always, I just love circles or working within a geometric shape. That's something that I've been kind of drawn towards lately and it's, it's cool to see you doing this. The, the composition feels familiar to me. It feels very similar to the handle drawing, but uh, you know, you've, you've made it your own and this is really beautifully done. Um, I, I don't know if you used your own hands as a reference. I hope you did because that, that just adds a little bit more to the creative process. I see you lit the hands and the elephant from the same side, which is so important. Some people, it seems obvious, but some people forget that they will have different elements of their reference photos have different lighting and that can really just take you out of the illusion. So what I love about this is your contrast is so rich. I think you use charcoal here or it looks like you've used charcoal here. So you've got really deep blacks and your highlights are actually quite crisp as well over here. I wonder, it actually looks a little bit lighter than your page over there. So I don't know if you use chalk or something like that to, to get your highlights, but it's, it's working for you. And the way that you blended it in is, is pretty good. What I'd like to see you focus a little bit more on is working on your outline for your background. I can see that you maybe struggled just a little bit with getting that rich background to blend in with the actual drawing to get that real chiaroscuro effect. I never know if I'm saying that right, but um, you can you can improve there a little bit. You can also improve just from not being too afraid to to bring your dogs into your fingers to really get, you know, it would kind of make them feel a little bit more round by bringing the dogs in here. It does just help the, the, the artwork kind of come out of the, the darkness rather than rather than having it a little bit distracted with the outlines and the, and the boundary lines. I think you can improve on your detail quite a bit. You're really quite like, you're just on the precipice, I think, of, of having a bit of a breakthrough here. I can see you picking up all the detail with your eye and it's just about rendering it nicely. So having softer shading with, with some of those harsh lights um, and bringing in some highlight detail over here. Maybe a nice highlight on the thumbnail over here. Make it look a little bit more realistic. I see there's a shadow here, which I'm not sure if it makes sense to me. I almost think that that's where a highlight should be. Or is the highlight coming down like this? I'd love to actually see a reference here to see how it went, but... There's something slightly off about the thumb, and I can't quite put my finger on it right now. Um, but I think you're on a really good roll here, and I'd like to see you just paying attention to some more details. But yeah, well done. Thank you for submitting. Okay, let's have a look at uh, Robin's work. Uh, Robin, you have submitted this really incredible line drawing. Look at that detail. That's insane. Um, what I like here is you're, you're using a technique that uh, my mom actually taught me, which is the embossing the page to, to get the hair. And it's really effective, or you've done it really effectively here. It's just, it's a really tricky technique because you can sometimes lose the opportunity for your mind to to fill in the individual hair strands which is starting to happen there a little bit more um, and I, I quite like what you've done there i've really struggled with hair in animals and everything and there's a point that you kind of 
breakthrough where you realize you can just have a really soft suggestion and one or two strands in between it. So I'm assuming the light is coming from the right here. Just really darken that up a bit. Get some of these, maybe some dark parts of that mane going. And then this head would cast a bit more of a shadow on this side. And the hair would obviously fall a little bit on the, the body there. Bringing this up, your detail here is really great, but I think you can be less afraid of, of going a bit darker. And it's, the lighting is really strange. I think it feels like the lighting is coming from that side, but on the feet, it's coming from that side, which is, yeah, okay. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe it's just coming from the top, which is very possible, of course. Okay, so there are my shadows. So something also with hair is that the hair, most, well, hair curves quite often. Even if it's straight, it'll have curves in it and those curves will catch the light. And that's always a really nice opportunity to try and bring out uh, shape in hairs. So what I wanna do here is try and just highlight smaller sections of your highlights in, in the hair. So imagining that that hair is curving slightly there. This would be curving here potentially. Cool. I mean, let's just have a look at what that layer has done. We've added just a little bit more shape. What I'm going to do is add some harsher highlights and just see if we can bring it even further. Something, an opportunity to really never try miss out on is to have the highlights in the eyes as bright as possible. It really just makes whatever you're drawing kind of look, you know, it comes to life a little bit more. All right, so what I'm doing is kind of just looking at the larger shapes in the hair and trying to highlight those so that get a bit of an effect going and see. Oops. It's quite substantial the effect that it can have on the artwork to to really bring it to life to make sure that your shadows are correct make sure that they are bold as well and don't miss an opportunity to get like a really sharp highlight find the, the lightest part of your piece and then really bring that light out so particularly in the the highlight of the eye i think would make a massive difference but this is a, a beautiful drawing i think you are on such a roll i'd like to see you use a little bit less of this technique with with the hair it is a great technique but maybe you, you definitely can benefit from using it a bit less or more sparingly more intentionally um but yeah well done beautiful join you can be very happy with that it's a new day and i got a haircut don't freak out and uh, let's continue from where we left off so next we have a submission from johnny it's the apple in the hand here i'm very familiar <laughs> with this this composition, hands always lovely to draw. The, the thing that stands out to me here is that there isn't a strong distinction between your lights and your darks. I think what might have happened here as well is the way you edited your reference image made everything kind of look flat. If you compress your highlights and compress your shadows, you tend to have quite a flat looking image with stark, stark shadows and stark highlights. And it's useful to bring life to something that's otherwise very flat. But if you have something that already has a lot of curves, what you end up doing is making that look flat with little highlights that stick out. So we've got these beautiful little contrasty bits here and that in isolation, you know, that looks cool, but the overall image is losing its depth here. So you want to have a distinction. This shadow here should be way darker than this highlight here. Um, let me see if I can play around with this and kind of give it a little bit more shape. Okay, so that's just with adding shadow and it looks a little bit more, looks a little bit more rounded. We've got more direction with the light. It kind of just, you know, makes it pop slightly. Then if you want to take it a bit further, we can play with some highlights. The way I'm working here as well is I'm not 
adding anything. I'm not, I'm actually taking away some of the detail that you already have here. So, you know, by doing this, it's not going to necessarily look better. It's just about showing you the effect that the highlight will, will have. You know, you're, making, you're bringing things out that you want to bring out, making them pop a little bit more. There's always a nice opportunity with, with wrinkles like this to, to bring in a bit of a, a highlight coming down. So I hope you I hope you get the point that I'm trying to make here. Just with focusing too early on your details again is something that you can really kind of stunt your progress in terms of how quickly you improve. I think it's better to to focus on the larger areas of light. There we go. Have a look at what that looks like. Yeah, but fantastic submission. Let me know what you think if this is helpful for you or not. I hope it is. Um, but great work. Thanks for submitting. Okay, and the next submission from Megan, I think. It's spelled in a way that I haven't really seen before. <laughs> but this is pretty cool. You added the reference image so I can see that as well. Um, and animal portraits are always really lovely and sometimes pretty tricky to do. But I think you've done a really good job here. Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty hard for me to critique. I think what you've missed a little bit is the, the blurriness of this ear. You, you've kind of got it here, down here, which gives you that depth of field or that, that bokeh effect. But if you try to achieve this blur um, on the ear, some things you need to remember are that it's not as contrasty. Our eyes are attracted to, to high contrast, so your darks won't need to go as dark as you have it there and to avoid any harsh lines at all. So, you know, we've got zero harsh lines. Everything here is quite faded. And then in our pencil work, there are a couple harsh lines. And that's what that's doing is basically just bringing your, bringing this focus sharper, bringing your eye into it. So there's an opportunity lost there a little bit to have this beautiful bokeh effect of, of having the, the dog's face perfectly in focus and its ears and its, its body a little bit out of focus. But I mean, you know, that's, that's just preference. Your drawing is really, really beautiful um, and you're clearly very skilled. So I don't think, um, you know, you can take that or leave it. I don't think you're gonna be suffering if you continue to work the way that you are. It's, it's really, really beautiful. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed me going through some of your artworks and giving just my feedback and critique on them. Before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they've played a huge role in my career, not only in helping me maintain this channel and sponsoring these videos, but more importantly, when I was starting out, I was looking for a way to showcase my work and to make it easy for clients to get in touch with me. And I just felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this critique video. It's always really difficult for me to critique artworks because it's... I'm scared of saying mean things to people about their artworks. But um, yeah, you guys submitted some really incredible works, some really powerful works. Um, and I, I hope my input just provided a bit of insight to, to how I would have approached those, those pieces myself. If you found this interesting, leave a like. It helps the channel out in a huge way. And if you have any feedback or tips, let me know in the comments. I really enjoy reading those and I can get back to you. So yeah, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.